Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 12th. This first one is from Bob H., also known as 1954 Shadow. This is the Solo Shot. This is a camera I talked about in the past. I think it was a Kickstarter project I talked about maybe well over a year ago. I'll put just a little bit of the video in here real quick. Uh, I noticed uh, last week when I did the robot video, they uh, are now, even when I turn the sound off, they're now even grabbing the... Uh, uh, visual part of it for uh, copyright, but they didn't uh, have it pulled down. They said they were going to allow me to use it, so hopefully it works out the same way with this one that they're going to allow me to use it. I mean, it's basically a promo for their own video, but yeah, this camera just follows and tracks you around. It does the pan and tilt. Uh, it's supposedly got a 64x optical zoom too, but I don't know if it's got an auto zoom. I saw no demonstration of that, but even for what it is, and I mean, the price isn't too bad either. If you want to throw in your own camera, it's a little bit over. $500 if you throw in your own camera and it's 683 with their camera with the 64x optical zoom so compared to people that'll spend 399 bucks for a GoPro camera I don't think this is really a lot of extra money to spend I mean it's about within that price range of what you would expect for what the mechanism does and everything and next this is from my friend oh my cat's want to come up here come on uh, my friend Tim from California this is about uh, it's from San Francisco Chronicle, and this is about, I'll read the title. It was a blast for the crew, but Mythbusters is ending its run. And it basically is your uh, swan song story where they're talking about um, the different people that contributed, especially the background, the producers and the directors and stuff like that on the Discovery Channel for the Mythbusters series. But unless you were living under a rock, if you're any kind of science geek, you know that Mythbusters is coming to an end, and this is their last season, uh, 14 seasons so far. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions about it. What did you think? Do you think all the seasons were equal, or um, do you think that maybe the first few seasons were actually better? That I think really up until maybe about season five it was excellent. Maybe it was good up till about season seven, but I think it was kind of, in some ways, wearing a little bit thin when you got past season seven. So after that, it was getting a little bit long in the tooth. Some of the some of the stories, some of the um, shows I didn't really like anywhere near as better as the other one. My favorite character actually was one of the early ones in the show that left on her own. That was Scotty. If you know her from other shows, too, that were on the Discovery Channel and I think the Learning Channel and stuff like that, she was quite the fabricator, too. A lot of people think, well, the Mythbusters was just having some female, you know, on there to be the token female. Well, Scotty, she was a great welder, great mechanic and fabricator in her own right and proved it way before the Mythbusters. And when she decided to leave on her own, um, to me, that really took a lot away from the show. She was my favorite character. But uh, I'd like to know from you guys, what was your favorite character or favorite story, if you want to share in the comments uh, about the Mythbusters. And now that it's, uh, I think there's still a few more episodes in the can. I'm not on cable anymore, so I can't really tell. I just have to grab the episodes as somebody posts them before they get pulled down. And uh, Mythbusters is a real fast one about doing that, too. I tell you, if you find one post somewhere on YouTube or something like that, it doesn't last very long before they, uh, you know, get it taken down and everything like that but nonetheless it is really really a great show and I think it was you know it added really a lot to science I mean uh, my science show when I was a real little kid was Mr. Wizard with Don Herbert but uh, I don't think really for a modern type of show really overall Mythbusters really did a great job I mean some shows were weak but I think overall they did a, they did a great job this next one is from newslink.com and I'm actually going to do an experiment with this I want to know what you guys think about it. I'm going to do a little bit more as I get ideas, I have to have an idea to do it, but I'm going to try a little bit more hands-on with the TDD report. I'm going to actually do this experiment. It says, science says this is the perfect way to boil an egg. And then if you scroll down, you look at the different types of boiled eggs. And it, it might seem kind of like, uh, I don't know, not something really worthwhile or something like that. But to me, if you get a real perfect soft-boiled egg, that thing is really delicious. I mean, hard-boiled eggs, eh. Completely soft-boiled eggs, if you don't mind runny, um, white with the egg. But... To get the perfect soft boiled egg when the yolk is just partially cooked but have all the white cooked perfectly, rarely could I ever achieve that. And supposedly this guy has a way to do it. And if you read this, he uh, starts the water boiling for 30 seconds and then every 30 seconds thereafter puts in a chunk of ice, uh, an ice cube. And then that way it keeps the temperature down so that the uh, outside cooks but it doesn't fully uncook because supposedly the yolk wants to be cooked at a 170 degrees to be good, but the uh, white wants to be cooked at 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do. On my next week's TDD report, and if any of you want to try it too, and especially send me the link to the video if you want to do it on video, um, I'd really like to uh, post if anybody else does hands-on stuff too. I'm going to actually do this, and I'm going to see if I can get my idea 
and I'll show you in the picture here. He's got one, three, five, and seven. Mine I want to hit right at about six minutes, I think would be my perfect if I could get that with his technique, which would be a little bit more done than the five minute one, but not quite as done as the seven minute one. That's what I'm gonna shoot for. If you notice there's a mistake on the bottom picture too. He says nine, eleven, and then I think the one's supposed to be thirteen and fifteen minutes, but he's got nine, eleven, eleven and fifteen, so I think this thing was mislabeled too, but anyway, the guy's name is Kenji. Kenji, the science cook, and uh, I guess he's pretty well known. He's got books on Amazon and stuff like that, but uh, I'm going to try Kenji's method and see how it works and let you guys know. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I'll catch you next week.